putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. All right, everybody, welcome back. One of my favorite tweets not long ago was, The left wants civil war. Our side has millions of weapons. Your side doesn't even know which bathroom to use. Your call. That was my favorite tweet of the day from Funky Town. Won't you take me to the Hey, I always like to leave you guys on a high note and not because I, you know, it's a contrived thing. I don't have to make up stuff for conservatives to be happy. We're happy people by nature. Even when things don't go our way, you know what we do? We say, trust in the Lord, trust and believe, right? Uh, Look, you don't understand why things happen. They happen for a reason. And it's not always for your understanding. That's what the beautiful thing about trusting in this thing that's out there that, you know, that we all believe in is this higher power is that you don't always have to understand. Sometimes you just go, look, it is what it is. As I like to say, it's all God's plan. So whether, you know, when Trump was running and I was one of the few people that told you, don't sweat it. God's got this, baby. You're going to win. Now, I remember 2008. I thought there's, you know, Barack Obama shouldn't win. But I was thinking to myself, I think God's going to make this fool win. And he did. He let him win. And then he let him win in 2012. And I, me and God had a conversation. I was like, hey, look, I, don't, I trust you all right, but I don't like this move. And God said, you be quiet. Don't make me hurt you. <laughs> so I just left it alone. And then 2016 comes. And what happens? We get exactly what we wanted, exactly what we needed. I know you were, Kevin, it wasn't exactly Sure it was subconsciously, subliminally. It was Donald Trump is exactly what this nation needed. Trust me on this. Trust in the Lord. I got to We got where's my music. I need some trusting in the God music. I need some gospel. (laughs) Anyway, I want to leave you guys on a high note. Employees at Newsweek have been told that editor in chief Bob Rowe and executive editor Ken Lee have been fired. They've been fired. A reporter, Celeste Katz, who has written articles about financial issues at the magazine, as well as an investigation by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office into the parent company, Newsweek Media Group, was also let go. The reporter. Katz declined to comment, but she tweeted this. My warmest thanks to the brave Newsweek editors and colleagues who supported and shared my work, especially our recent difficult stories about the magazine itself. Before my dismissal today, I'll sleep well tonight and I'm looking for a job. It's in triage. Now, where's uh, Jeff Bezos when they need him? This leftist rag has been anti-Trump, anti-conservative movement. Jeff Bezos, who's propped up the Washington Post, who, by the way, would have had to fire half its staff, if not all of it, had this multi-billionaire decided he wasn't going to make an issue of going after Trump. Where are you at now, Bezos? Now that the truth is coming out, what say you? You want to know why Bezos didn't put an offer in on this clown magazine? Because it's not worth it. And eventually, he's going to lose interest in Washington Post because what Jeff Bezos is watching is his money grow by leaps and bounds. He's looking at a marketplace built by Donald Trump, not built by Barack Obama, and he's having to reassess. And so is every one of these people. Look, stock market's taking a hit. Friday took a hit yesterday. Trust me, guys, it'll come back. Stock markets go and they come down. Look at a chart. Look at the chart of the market and tell me what you see. You see a steady increase. Now, they've been talking about this correction that's needed and all this. Call it a correction. Call it whatever you want. The market dropped. You can panic. Go ahead. They're going to be profit seekers that that take advantage of that panic and they're going to get into the market and it's going to creep back up and it's going to go 15% higher than it is today and it won't take very long. Now, there are people that say, oh, Kevin, the market is, is a... You know, it's a, 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 a multiple factors and different things. It's 26 percent, 26 times what the value of the cap and the market cap and all this other crap. Believe me. Uh, look, I'm no prognosticator of this stuff. I'm in the market myself, taking a little bit of a beating, but I'm not going to panic. And let me tell you why, because things have a way of writing themselves. And I, I say that pun intended, just like what's happening at Newsweek. 
Staff in Newsweek's New York offices were told they could stop working and go home for the day on Monday afternoon. Can I confirm I was fired? I know nothing else. Can say nothing else yet, Rowe told CNN in an email. Lee could not be reached for comment. What a day to leave my charger at home. A spokesman for Newsweek said the company would not comment on personnel matters. Turbulent time for the magazine, they say. Just last week, the co-owner and chairman of Newsweek Media Group, Etienne Uzak, and his wife, Marion Kim, who acted as the company's finance director, both stepped down. See, you got hit in the market two days in a row, Friday and Monday, and you thought it's all bad news. It's all paper money anyway, folks. It's electronic. It's not yours until you decide to sell it and go do something tangible. Get yourself some property or something to eat. Till then, you're just flailing in the wind with the market. Ride it out. But the good news is, you're winning. And the more you win, the, eventually, the market's going to win. Everything around you starts to win. Your schools win. Your kids win. Your church wins. Your community wins. Because leftism takes a beating. It takes a loss. Cats, Saul, and IBT reporter Josh Keefe had all contributed articles about the turbulence at Newsweek in recent weeks, including the resignations of Uzak and Kim. Katz had also reported on the company's chief content office, Diane Kandapa, who was placed on leave following a BuzzFeed report into sexual harassment allegations. Yep. But we, BuzzFeed said also that led to Kandapa's departure from Reuters. But hey, no problem. He's a sexual harasser at Reuters. Let's bring him over to Newsweek. We'll change him. Certainly he'll change. He's a bad boy, but we'll do something for him. I love him. The New York Post, citing a source co- uh, close to the company, reported that the Manhattan DA's probe is focused on the financial connection between the former Newsweek Media Group executives and a Christian college, Olivet University. Olivet said in a a statement last month that it was inaccurate to say that there is a connection between the raid and the university. Let me tell you why they did that. I read that article and I thought exactly the same thing. They could not let Newsweek go down without bringing down something that had to do with the right. It's a Christian university. We've associated. One time they passed, the Newsweek staff passed by the campus. <gasps> the horror. Uzak co founded International Business Times, which in 2013 bought Newsweek. In 2017, the company was rebranded as Newsweek, Newsweek Media Group. Uzak, Uzak's uh, IBT co founder, Jonathan Davis, is married to the president of Olivet. That's the connection. Now, what's going on right now in Newsweek? They're scrambling. They don't know what to do. Leftists are losing their jobs. Journalists are losing their jobs and they don't know where to go. Hey, Washington Post, I wonder if they're hiring. Where, where can you go? Every one of these places is bleeding red ink. Why? Because they lie. Because they're fake news journalists. Let me tell you where to turn Newsweek around. If they reported the news correctly, you want to know why the Hill is is actually d- does OK. It's it's consi- it was considered at one point a lefty magazine. And I was look I was studying all these different uh, media groups, particularly the lefties. And you know what the Hill decided? They said, we need to report the news is news. We need to stop being slanted. And you know what? I referenced the Hill quite often. Versus Huffington Post versus Daily Coast. Now, look, some of these guys make no bones about it. We're leftists. We don't care. Okay, I got you. Good for you. But for those who want to pass themselves off as news agencies like Newsweek, that's got it in its name, you would think they would at least try to be fair. Time Magazine's next. Remember when these places were the, this is where you went to get news. It was like, oh, it was in Newsweek. Now it means nothing. It was in time. You know what I hear when I hear it? it's been Newsweek. It was in time. It was in blankety blank. I go, who cares? I might as well have read some third graders blog. They said, uh, senior uh, writer Matthew Cooper tendered his resignation as a result of the chaos. He says uh, he's seen more reckless leadership. He's never seen more reckless leadership than what's going on over there. 
He says it's the installation of editors, not Lee and Rowe, who recklessly sought clicks at the expense of accuracy, retweets over fairness that leave me most despondent, not only for Newsweek, but for other publications that don't need the lessons of this publication's fall. He understands it. Folks, journalism wants to return. The, the ship wants to be righted. It's designed that way. But it has to weather the storm. And the left, they're not going to weather this storm. You are, because you you understand you have a basis for handling the storm. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.